Megan's new book of poems was very revealing, but who exactly did she expose? Welcome to Beyond the Screen, I'm Nate, and these are 10 celebrities Megan Fox tried to warn us about in her memoir. Number 10, Brian Austin Green. Megan's relationship to Brian Austin Green is one of her longest and more recent before MGK. They were together for over 16 years and have kids together. They first met in 2004 while filming the sitcom Hope and Faith and fell madly in love. After all that time, she officially filed for a divorce after coming home from filming a movie. According to Megan, she had spent a lot of time on her own and just loved the way it felt. Something she said she needed to explore more. On her own was the way she liked it, and in the years since, Brian Austin Green has actually said that he was upset at first, but came to understand her position. She didn't ask to feel that way when she left. Many fans of the poems believe that she made reference to her relationship with Brian several times, considering the content of the poems and what they're really about. Brian being mentioned may not be the best thing for him. Number nine, Shia LaBeouf. Starring together in a movie means a lot of time spent in each other's company. After starring on the set of the first Transformers film, Megan and her co-star Shia LaBeouf became an item. Megan says very plainly in her book that she has an addiction to boys, and namely, her co-stars. However, another section of her book describes a very toxic relationship that lasted around two years. And as we know now, Shia has not been the best boy in town. He's been accused by ex-partners of being rude, physical, and exceedingly manipulative. Now, over the past few years, Shia has attempted to reinvent that image, being real with the world and owning up to his mistakes. Many people believe that Shia is who this poem is really about, but considering what Megan has said about Shia over the years, we don't think that's the case. She has said in recent years that she loves Shia, not loved, loves. They apparently had a very serious connection on set, but as soon as she was no longer involved with the franchise, the relationship ended. Is Shia one of the many men she's speaking of in this book of poems? Who knows? Number eight, David Gallagher. David is one of the more concerning parts of Megan's dating history, and evidence would show that one of her poems surrounding a toxic relationship may in fact be in reference to David. In her poems, Megan writes about a toxic relationship that she was eventually able to get out of thanks to the support of her friends and her family. The relationship lasted roughly two years, and she has never said out loud who this person is. Understandably, she doesn't want to start some kind of a legal situation over a relationship, even though from the sounds of it, she has every right right to throw this man in jail. It's never been confirmed if David is in fact the man that she mentions in the pages of her poems, but it seems to make the most sense. She has been relatively quiet about their time together, the relationship lasted the right amount of time, and something about the photos of them together from back in the day just don't sit well with people. Again, I don't know for sure what's what, so please don't take what I'm saying as me revealing the truth, because at the end of the day, this list is a combination of things that I found on the internet and actual information from her book. So, hey man, if I had the inside scoop, that would be awesome. Number seven, MGK. Cheating rumors are always circulating about everyone. No one believes that Hollywood icons can actually have a normal, healthy relationship. For Megan and her fiance, MGK, there have been rumors since day one. Since the first day these two were spotted together, people have been convinced that MGK is somehow an unfaithful maniac. But why? Why would people think that? I'm not sure if you've listened to this guy speak about his music or just in general, but he's kind of a sweetheart. I watched him paint his nails with Drew Barrymore on her show. They talked about life, careers, so many neat things, and yet the internet looks at this dude and just assumes that he's a menace. Well, the rumors were of course false, and Megan Fox cleared the air herself. There was a rumor that MGK was seeing someone named Sophie, who was MGK's guitarist, but Megan cleared the air and let everyone know not only had MGK never cheated on her, but she was actually pretty close with his bandmates and was confident that Sophie and MGK weren't an item. Megan told people that it was extremely disrespectful respectful to run a news story that is baseless and contains only lies, and I couldn't have put it better myself. Number six, Angelina Jolie. Now, being compared to anyone in life is not really a great feeling, even if that person is the coolest in the world. Why can't people just appreciate me for me, man? Well, that was the question on Megan's mind when she was offered the role that once belonged to her rival, Angelina Jolie. That's right, I said rival. 
Apparently, very early in Megan's career, she was being compared to Jolie constantly. Just a side comment for a while, the comparison became all too clear when she was offered the role of Laura Croft in the 2018 reboot of the original franchise. During the casting process, Megan claims that she was pulled in for a meeting. The director really wanted someone who could hold their own and reinvent themselves with a role like Laura. Megan was offered this role after the director saw her in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So, yeah. In the first meeting, she was compared to Angelina Jolie and told exclusively that she reminded them of her. And apparently that's not the compliment that people think it is. They said that she was a no-brainer and that she loves the character, but the comparison was just apparently too much for her. Of course, the role eventually went to Alicia Vikander and the movie ultimately flopped. But we can't imagine Megan was only upset about the comparisons, right? Number five, Michael Bay. Megan's been featured in several movies over the years, but it was an interview about her time with Michael Bay that landed her in some hot water. The original live-action Transformers movies came out in 2007, starred Megan and Shia LaBeouf in the leading roles, and they were fun films, but apparently behind the scenes there was a ton of tension. According to Megan, who had previously worked with Michael on Bad Boys 2, working with this man was like working for a dictator in Germany in 1945. If you've taken a history class, you know who I'm talking about. Schmittler! Of course, Michael didn't appreciate being compared to you know, one of the worst men in history, so a lot of people speculated that her being left out of the third movie may have had something to do with behind the scenes drama. She went on to call him bland and claimed that he had no personality or social skills, which is just really rude. When the comments were made public, her career started slowly suffering. Not only was she written out of Transformers, but she was forced to make a public apology and retract the statements following the massive slew of backlash. She took a few years off, but Michael himself later acknowledged this misstep on Megan's part and not only accepted the retraction, but they actually ended up working together on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Woohoo! Let's break away from celebrities for a moment and just talk about this book because it it's neat and it revealed a lot of stuff. Number four, the tragedy. One of the more truly tragic revelations since the book's release is the fact that Megan suffered a loss very late in her journey as a mother. Within the final pages of the poetry book, Megan describes a heartbreaking pregnancy loss that she suffered with her current fiance, Colson Baker, better known as MGK. Megan told Kana Whitworth from ABC News that she had never been through anything like that before in her life. She is three kids already so it was very difficult for both of them and sent them on a very wild journey together and separately and together and apart trying to navigate what everything means and why it happened. Megan has made it clear since day one that this is not some expose memoir that you're gonna sit down and read for like 20 hours. This is a collection of truth told in her words, a story that she needed to share or it's going to make her sick. She's dealt with physical violence from exes, manipulation, tragedy, all of these things that she has had to deal with alone or behind closed doors. Now, while she never names any names in her book, we still feel our hearts wrench when she reads any single sentence. Number three, Addicted to Boys. The title of Megan's book of poems is called Pretty Boys Are Poisonous and is filled with multiple excerpts regarding her past relationships. One thing she has spoken about briefly in interviews about this book is the fact that she was addicted to boys and had a history of getting together with her co-stars. She told Drew Barrymore on the Drew Barrymore show that when she was young, she was really rebellious and wild, always running away to fall in love with a new flame, aka every co-star ever. She added that at the time she felt herself to be a free spirit and was addicted to the idea of falling in love. She went on to tell Drew that it was actually her kids Noah, Bodie, and Journey that changed her whole mindset on her relationships and love. She shares her three sons with her ex Brian Austin Green, and she claims that something happened when she had her first, realizing that she didn't want to repeat the patterns of her own parents with her kids. Despite being a solid mom, she did admit that she's been a little bad in the past, admitting that she painted a Friedrich Nietzsche quote on an ex's wall in a ton of paint so that they had to redo their room, poking fun at herself by saying that anyone who dated her should write a poetry book because she was not a peach. Number two, Oxys and Takikis. There is a poem in this book that shares the same name as this title entry, sort of. I'm not allowed to say the real thing because Frickin' internet and their restrictions. Megan revealed on Good Morning America that she has been in several physically and mentally damaging relationships. And I know that's not even close to the right word to use, but again, can't say anything real on the internet. She explained that she was involved with a very famous dude, but nobody knew who she was dating. This unnamed celebrity is one of the men described as an evil ex. In her poem, she describes a dark moment with this unnamed man writing, your eyes go black and I know it's too late to run. 
She told people that she was pinned, spat on, and later had hands placed on her throat by this delusional and possessed man. I had the opportunity to listen to some parts of this book, and I'm saying this 100% sincerity, go check it out. Megan is a wonderful writer, and I honestly feel like these words are very powerful. This particular one is indescribable. I can't read the entire thing to you because it's got no-no words in it, but I also don't want to ruin it for you. And at number one, the 2009 Golden Globes. Now this isn't a revelation from her book, but it's something that she had to go through publicly and it deserves to be mentioned. In 2009, comments started flying left and right after Megan Fox was spotted acting a little strange at that year's Golden Globes. She explained that during the event, she was placed at a table with Blake Lively and the Jonas Brothers. In the center of the table was a bottle of Mo Champagne, and she went through multiple glasses of that. At the time, she was not much of a drinker, but following her actions at the event, she decided to quit for good. She actually had herself a good old fashioned blackout at the event, but the parts that she does remember are not great. She then went to the red carpet and said a lot of things that got her in a ton of trouble. In a clip from 2009, Megan can be seen walking around and telling people how nervous she was to be there and that she was on the verge of tossing her cookies at any moment. She also made a ton of comments on her female co-stars, nothing bad. One quote is just her expressing how much she wanted to have Selma Hayek's chest. The evening was also a little strange as people were wondering where her husband at the time, Brian Austin Green was. And apparently he was a man with an ego and he didn't want to be her date. At least that's what she said. And those are all the celebrities exposed in Megan's new book. Again, if you haven't, please go check this thing out. And if you enjoyed this video, drop a like down below. Follow the channel for more celebrity content each and every day. And thanks for stopping beyond the screen. See you next time.